So we'll be focusing on the Odin from the rifle category in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. So while doing that, we're also going to focus on these different aspects as we go throughout the video. I'm going to focus on how to play Euphrates Bridge, the power positions on this map, the overall weapon profile for the Odin, as well as the best class setup for the Odin, and then finish it off with a gameplay breakdown where I kind of take you through my thought process, what I'm thinking in the moment, so we can focus on tips that will actually help you improve as a player while you're playing this game. So if you enjoy the content or find any of it helpful, please do me a favor of hitting that like button. And if you're brand new around here or not currently subscribed, you might want to consider subscribing with notifications on to be able to find your way back for more Call of Duty content. So this map is specifically designated for 20 players in the 10v10 playlist, regardless if it's team deathmatch or domination. So as we take a look at the overhead view of the map, we can see there's a lot going on here, but I've labeled where the specific flags are in domination. So if you find yourself spawning in on the A side, what you're really trying to do is push up and try and gain map control by getting as close to that yellow line on the opposite side of the map without actually crossing it. And the same concept works if you're starting over on the C spawns but the most important area of the map is going to be the bridge in the center of the map and I'm specifically talking about the top part not the lower area you primarily want to focus on controlling that top part and that is going to be your primary power position on Euphrates bridge so you're going to go ahead and see within the gameplay that I'm locking down this area right now and I'm waiting for teammates to push up I could easily run over there to B and then I end up dying and that's not going to give us full control of the map Right now, I'm also very close to the next set of streaks, so that's all I'm really focused on right here. I have to play my life. You can see I put the VTOL right over there so that the enemy has to focus on shooting it down or running up the stairs and getting hit, so they're going to be a little bit distracted. As I do this, we start to get teammates pushing up, and then that allows us to capture the B flag. Right now, I'm really trying to control this side, play my life, play safe, so I can get that extra kill because I know the chopper gunner will allow us to maintain this map control. Right now, we start into a match a little bit late. Our team wasn't really fighting for the objective at the beginning. And then once I was able to start chaining some of these streaks together, you can see that we start getting this map control. And you're gonna see what I was talking about a little bit earlier play out because what we saw with those yellow dotted lines, you can see that my teammates left on the mini map are kind of moving their way a little bit too deep into the enemy spawn. What will inevitably happen when you push too deep and pass that yellow line is you're going to force flip the spawns so that the enemies spawn on the C side instead of where they're at. And the main reason you want the enemies to be in this specific area is because it makes it very predictable. You know where they're at. They're not going to slip through the cracks. They're not going to come up and flank you. It pretty much simplifies the entire process so you can maintain that map control. And more often than not, what you're gonna do is get these teammates that are a little bit bored or whatever the case is because maybe you're racking up too many of the kills or maybe they just don't know better and they just keep pushing deeper and deeper into the enemy spawn and then they end up ruining it. And I think in this game more than ever, the spawns are very bad and they can flip on a dime. You can see that that teammate is pushing way back there. You can see the dot on my screen. He has no business being in that area. And if we kill too many of these enemies, you're gonna see how the spawn will end up eventually flipping. So that guy is doing the worst possible thing for the team. Everyone is lined up, everyone's getting kills, everyone's doing well. We're regaining the lead slowly, even though we're still down by 40 points. The numbers still end up being on our side. As long as we hold a double cap, we'll end up winning the match by a couple points. So based off the several design choices that they've made within the game, they've made it so that streaking is very easy on the kill side as well as the death side. What you'll never really find out is maybe you go on a long streak. You go on like a 12, 15 streak, and then you end up dying. What you'll notice more often than not is you'll just continue to die because that's the way the game is structured. Someone is going to be in a good spot and you're going to be in a crappy spot coming out of spawn and then you're going to go ahead and try and fight for that spawn even though their position is a little bit more powerful. You can see how the teammates end up pushing a little bit too deep as soon as I started killing a few of those and now the enemies are all flooding around but at least I know where they're all at. So getting back to that streaking part, ideally you're going to want to go ahead and push the bridge as a team. So what you'll notice is if you're in a lobby where your teammates just want to sit back, they don't really want to contribute, and you're going ahead and pushing up, and you make some good solid attempts, maybe you get a couple kills when you take the bridge, but you don't get any support, I'd stick it out for a little bit, but if their behavior doesn't change, I just end up leaving that match. If your teammates refuse to actually push up and take the bridge when you've literally killed every single person on the bridge, then that is not a lobby you want to stay in. Those people are just going to frustrate you. And I'm not saying the people pushing the bridge need to be good. Literally, no one has to have any kind of gun skill 
all they need to do is have a body on the bridge because that allows you to have more sight lines covered. It allows you to recapture the objective faster. There's a lot of variables associated with that. You know, if a teammate ends up dying, then you know, hey, you know what? An enemy is probably coming up from that area, and that's going to give you information on the minimap that you can hopefully use to stay alive, get your streaks, and then continue to maintain that map control. So let's talk a little bit more about the Odin, and the Odin is actually a pretty decent weapon, but with it being as powerful as it is, it comes with a couple drawbacks. One of the biggest drawbacks, in my opinion, happens to be the recoil. I think if you're hitting people at a little bit further ranges, it can be difficult as people get very far away to manage that recoil. And the other issue, in my opinion, is the ammo capacity, which can partially be fixed with extended mags, which we're going to go ahead and talk about. But overall, I think those are the only two drawbacks. The overall damage output and all that type of stuff, it kills in two or three bullets, depending on the range. And even though it has an incredibly slow rate of fire at 431 rounds per minute, it has a two-shot time to kill of 139 milliseconds and a three-shot time to kill of 279 milliseconds, which places both of those times to kill third in the rifle category. So a good class setup I recommend for the halfway point of this weapon right around level 40 is to use the stipple grip tape, the compensator, the Merc 4 grip, the Odin Factory 110 millimeter barrel, as well as an extended mag. You don't get the 30 round extended mag all the way until like level 55 or something like that. So I'd highly recommend switching to that one once you have it available. So I'm using that class setup with one quick modification. I end up dropping the magazine for an optic. And the primary reason for that is because I'm actually doing the reticle grind and I'm grinding through those specific ones. And I'm currently on using the aim op reflex sight. So now we've covered all that. Let's go ahead and get into a gameplay breakdown. What you're going to look at here is I'm actually trying to earn that bridge. And how you got to do that is slowly creep up. I could have gone to the left, get the stairwell. You can see that some of my teammates are already up top. So what I'm doing is trying to push up to that yellow line that we talked about earlier in the video. The key in Modern Warfare tends to be just moving deliberately throughout the map. What I mean by deliberately, that means planning out your specific plan of action and moving at the appropriate pace. Not going too fast and not literally just camping back. I don't want to sit here that long, but I do want to make sure that when I push forward, it is safe to push forward. I see that I have a teammate on the top, but he's not really overlooking at all. He's not going to provide any support. He's kind of back at an angle on the bridge where he's not going to have a clear sight line. I see they throw the smoke and I'm thinking that might be my opportunity. I end up spotting a guy and decide to push a little bit forward. This is a little bit of a risky thing because I don't really have anywhere to go. They know where I'm at. They can nade me, whatever the case is. So I end up taking out this first guy. The second guy knows I'm there. I pre-aim. I manage to take him out. And then I back off a little bit because I know this area is safe. This area is almost completely safe. Based off where my teammates are and just coming from that area, I know I'm in a good spot. See, my teammates are pushing up. I'm looking to see if I can creep up slowly. I don't want to rush out there and be an idiot. I'm on a pretty decent streak right here. I need one kill for a VTOL. And you can see that my teammates have just been taken out. I've been taken out a few different ways. And I get another kill there. And now I'm pushing up. And you, this is the edge of that yellow line. I don't want to push any deeper into the enemy spawn. And this is where you'd position yourself if you're looking to play a little bit more aggressively. Meaning that you're going to be at a higher risk of dying because you're so deep in the enemy spawn. That you're going to get surrounded pretty quickly. If you kill them, they're going to be coming for that revenge kill. And they're going to be coming back very quickly. On this, you can see that I was able to go ahead and place it in the corner of the map where they're at. And then that allowed me to get the chopper gunner. While that VTOL is in the air, I figure I'm going to go ahead and try and maximize the chopper gunner. And I know that could be a little bit counterproductive because obviously the VTOL is trying to get kills. Then you're out there trying to get kills. But the benefit of having the VTOL out while you have the gunship is they can only shoot down one at a time. Obviously, if they team up, they're going to go ahead and shoot down all of them. But you can see that guy is using a little bit of the Joker launcher and he's trying to shoot me down. He's already shot a couple of them. I'm going and taking the guy out. I have a lot of time racking up a ton of kills and they're pretty much spawn trapped. But you can see where I'm at. They continue to push out. And right as I come out of this, you're going to see that my teammates end up pushing in the spawn and ends up flipping it. Look at how deep the teammates were in before the enemy called in that counter UAV that blocked up the mini map. Now, obviously, we got to work back to the other side of the map. And it almost always works out this way. Literally, you go ahead and take over C, spawn flips. Now the enemy team's working on taking A. That's why it's one of the worst things you can do. I know there's a lot of OBJ players out there, but honestly, that's almost the worst thing you could possibly do when you play Domination, and I see it happen all the time. And it's kind of a 50-50 on the flip. Now we gotta go ahead and kind of push back to B, and hopefully we've held it down long enough. But sometimes what inevitably will happen is that you end up losing B completely. The enemy team gains that map control. 
and now you're fighting to get out of your spawn which was perfectly held and controlled the map for the entire time and that's why if you're a true obj player you should only ever have one capture you should only be able to capture b at the start of the match and maintain that for the entire match or half the team goes ahead and captures the home spawn and they keep that for the entire match and that's pretty much how it goes hopefully you enjoyed the video because i had a lot of fun making it if you did please remember to hit that like button if you like this style of video make sure you let me know down in the comment section i kind of switched it up a little bit if you're brand new looking to find your way back probably should go ahead and make sure you subscribe with notifications on appreciate all the support on the channel thank you for watching as always have a great day